Okay, Glenn, um, Lori's going to show you the PAL pads. This first little video is just going to be a quick run through of some of the features. And I wanted to just mention the PAL pads is uh, by far one of our, our biggest money makers. It's got a huge profit margin, and we could even do probably do more. Um, that's just important to keep in mind. Might well yeah, I might as well do as long yeah. as I'm talking now. Um, might as well keep that in mind that th this is a this is a product to pay attention to. We sell thousands of these, and the profit margin is very very good. So I just thought I'd let you know. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out is the sticker on the back. It doesn't really matter. I know you won't be able to see it, but on the back is um, an indication of the current that this thing can handle. Um, people will try to plug this into a wheelchair and make it work, and they'll burn a hole in the middle because it's too much current. So that was just a little, a, a tiny point I wanted to point out. So go ahead, Lori. All right. First, when people think of a switch, they generally think of the big red switch. That's one of the things that um, people seem to always be familiar with. So always start talking about um, the PAL pad. They think it's, when they look at it, they think it's something, it's not really a switch because you can't push it and it doesn't click and all those things. So I always say, this is the same as this as far as um, how you use a switch. It's a pressure switch. Now, there are kids who need to feel that depression, hear that click, but there are also kids that just push on this and you're not sure if they're want knowing exactly what they're doing or if this is what is luring them. If they're a child that really does need to feel that depression, hear that click, then the pal pad probably isn't the first choice to switch, except for we're going to show you how to incorporate it into lots of things. So it is a true pressure switch, 1.2 ounces of pressure, the whole area you can activate anywhere. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, John. Okay, into here? Yeah, right. just because that's an easy one. I'm going to put it on its side. Yeah. You can see it a lot better. So, no matter where I push, where I touch. Now, it's a very... Did you see what that pressure was on there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it's also very low profile. So, for some kiddos who can't maybe get their hand up to this switch they can just move over on it that way. It's, and this so is that's, my credit card. Yeah. This is about the thickness of two, two credit cards, two and a half credit cards. And these ones are even thinner. Yeah. And so again, very light pressure, but very durable. And we're going to show you a durability test in a little bit. Oh, by the way, I see, I, I, I put grease fingerprint. My hands are greasy because I put stuff yep. on. I have fingerprints on here. That reminds me, these are washable. You can wash it. You don't want to get water up in this little area of here, but you can wash these um, and get all the wipe it off. Yeah, yeah. Wipe, wipe it off. Easy, easy. Three different sizes um, for different uses, different mountings, all of that. They're very lightweight, so they're easy to mount um, with just a little piece of Velcro, double stick tape, those kinds of things. The only switch I know that is lighter is pressure is the micro light but again it is so small that your target area um is difficult you have to have really good fine motor and that's, that's to get Ablenet that switch just to say that's able net yeah i think other micro people sell it too other but people carry yeah that. um so that really oh we also carry one that's glow in the dark the small size and the large size which goes well with the sense yes Sen castle which is Again, more for sensory use, that kind of thing, um, in sensory rooms. So that's been um, fun to see people use it that way. But the glow-in-the-dark ones can be used just like these as well. So it's like an extra feature. You can certainly use it just like you would use any other pal pad. Because it's flat, and we'll talk about this more with the sequencer and the randomizer, easy to put into things, under things. I always tell people, if you have a child who's really into something, let's say right now they're into Bluey, because Bluey is a big Disney thing right now. And I have some things in the case that are Bluey. So there's like a placemat. 
I can put this flat switch under that placemat and now the top of that placemat is what is engaging to them so they can have literally a bluey switch by pushing on that placemat. You can't put something like this under there um, and have it be flat. I could put bluey on the top, cut him out, do some things like that. But using simple things, um, we have a, a resource book called Adapt This, which is now free to download and print off. Um, and so, um, I would suggest you just go on our website and at least look at it. The whole first chapter is about things to do with pal pads, um, putting them into books, putting things on top, those kinds of things. So I think you'd find that interesting. And, and I'll give, Glenn, I'll get you a, a link to that. It's a PDF you can download. Yeah, I think that's it for the pal pad. Okay, one thing... Thank. One thing I wanted to point out, Glenn, is uh, Miro and I were talking about, and this is, was Lori's idea. Yeah. Lori went in and looked at it, and she noticed that in the in the Sun Castle, there's no provisions for uh, using external switches. And I talked to Miro about it. It's really not a problem from a technical standpoint. It's not hard to put in a couple of wires that are just female jacks that you can plug this sort of switch in. The advantage of that is is a lot. For one, is you you can then use a switch that that a, a child is already accustomed to using, maybe a, a, a student with real limited access, and she's already accomplished the, uh, uh, you know, or proficient with this switch. And the other one is uh, the Sun Castle isn't, um, you, can't, you can't drive a wheelchair into it, um, but you can drive a wheelchair right up to it. And we were talking about this, is, is one of these PAL pads, you can... If you can connect it up to the Send Castle as an external switch, which he'll do, however many he wants, that's his, that's his circus, his monkeys, I guess, um, you can then put this switch on the floor. And, oh, we got to stomp on it too, Lori. That's the last yep, thing I have to yep. do. You can put this switch on the floor. And I've done this in real-world applications where uh, an adult in a wheelchair would run this over with her wheelchair to activate something. It works like a dream. Works and like that's dream. it. We have... There are a lot of OTs and PTs who love this switch because they can incorporate it into other activities. Activities on the mat, under the mat, on the mat. We've put it in baby cribs where they roll onto it. Yeah. Um, and so there's just a lot more things you can do with it. I've used it. I had kiddos um, in school who uh, they were trying to train to you know, sit down. They loved music. So we put this on the seat and they sat on it. And as long as they sat on it, the music played. But if they got up, it stopped. You can't really do that with, again, your big red switch. You're not going to have them sit on that. But here, even under a cushion, it's still going hmm. to activate. And so that's why this switch is just phenomenal as far as incorporating into other activities. OTs love to incorporate them into obstacle courses and things like that. So we'll stomp on it and show you. Yeah, we, we want to do, this is this is a great visual. Go ahead. Lord. And we do this at the booth. Yeah, this is a great visual we do at the booth um, to show people. Any, anytime you're ready, Lori. Yeah. Um, she, she, she's stepping on that pretty hard. And uh, you wouldn't do that. Okay, we can bring that back. We wouldn't do that with with this with other switches like this. Um, when you do this, people see that, and they and that the, that makes a really. You want them to remember your switch, up the pal pad, Glenn. Take it off and stomp on it, and then put it up there. Stomp hard, hard as you can, if you want. Don't hurt your your old knees, but um, stomp on that, and that's a really good visual effect. All right. All right. Is that it, Lori? Yep. Okay, so next, Glenn, we're going to do some um, just some some applications. We don't have your equipment case, of course, but we're we, Lori found some examples of adapting uh, to books and such that are very very similar to um, the applications you've already got yeah. one of those cases. You so, have these applications. Yeah, you, you have these. Just a yeah, so just book. yeah, it's just a different book. So just rummage through those, and you'll you'll find see what we mean.